Hey, Poda friends, Kilo Echo Zero, Victor, India, Mike, the Traveling Ham. Today, we are in Mesa Verde National Park, and we're gonna be activating Prater Ridge. Let's go. This is the special activation. Kilo Echo Zero, Victor, India, Mike, Park, Park. The traveler has come. He's a huge, beastly, bulging man. Plates are from Kansas. All right, we're all packed up, ready to go. This is a training mission here, this hike here, this activation. So we're going up 500 feet. We've got Samantha here again today, precious KE0VIM. And uh, we're loading up our packs. We're training for a future secret mission that you'll see here in a few weeks. So we just got her, her pack turned sideways for us. How many pounds you got in there, Samantha? Uh, almost 20. 20, yeah, it was really close to right at 20 pounds. I'm carrying 35, uh, which is probably more than I'm gonna want in the end. But uh, part of it is just putting some stuff in the bag and seeing how much it weighs, and then putting that on our back and seeing what that weight feels like. So that's today's mission. And we're gonna make some contacts right at the top too. Ready? Yep. Let's go. Yeah, so this is Prater Ridge. We are at the north end of the park. All of the cliff dwellings, the ancient Puebloan cliff dwellings, are about 40 minutes to our south. Still in the park, but it's that long of a drive to get down there where they're at. Huh? That scare you? Huh? I thought that was an insect up there. You see it? Okay. Good job. Do you see it? I think it was up there higher. Okay, it's not right here on the trail. Come forward slowly. There you go, keep coming forward slowly. You're good. What? You sure? Come this way. Okay, on a pill. You're good. Huh? 
I was thinking it was something of a locust sound or something. You think it was a rattlesnake? Yeah, I saw the snake. I heard it rattle, I glanced over, not thinking, and then I saw a snake. How far up the bank was it? Maybe like somewhere in there. Really? Back okay, there? so that was interesting. Samantha swears she saw a rattlesnake. I heard something as we walked by. I thought it was uh, like an insect up in a bush or something. Yeah, it sounded like a grasshopper. Yeah, yeah. We've been hearing a lot of grasshoppers or... CQ, CQ, like parks on the air. Kilo Echo oh, Zero, Victor, here. India, Mike. And she says she saw a snake next to the trail. I turn around and she froze. <laughs> Good instincts on this girl. All right, a little drama. Okay. We are leaving this hike. The effing snakes are out. We are getting rattled at. Okay, stay back. You want to go back to that log, Samantha? All right, dude, we'll get out. Let me out of here. I'll turn around, I'll go home. We'll slither off. He's got all his attention on me. There you go, there you go. There he's going up the hill. Yeah, I'm not dealing with this all the way up. We still gotta get past that spot we know the other one was. He didn't have much energy, he's moving really slow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See how slow he's moving, though? I'm going to let him get up a little bit higher, and I'll go by slow. We'll head back down. Two in the first quarter mile. That's enough. Yeah, well, that's defense on their part. Okay. I'm going to try to get around him now, Samantha. He's under a bush going in. All right. I'm past him. <laughs> I'm with you. I'd rather encounter a bear. <laughs> He was in the same spot too, right there on the side of the trail. Oh yeah, that one was closer. I gave me goosebumps going past him. Yeah, yeah I want to lead going back. We're going to go super slow and uh, stay separated like you were doing. Okay. And we're going to go really slow past the spot we know we saw the last one. Yeah. Okay, this is really freaky. We're just walking back super slow. We're making noise. Maybe we'll get warned before. I get to them as opposed to them hitting their rattles right as I go by and then by the time we know what's going on he's between us I don't know I'm pretty spooked Samantha how about you Yeah. <laughs> man I was even looking on that second one too I was I was scanning the trail but that camo that camo just does its job oh boy parks on the air Oh, boogers hide. Hey, snake! I thought I heard something move in the bush. I think this is where you walked right around through here in this clearing, Samantha. Yeah, I think so. Okay? Okay. Yeah, I can see where the grass is bent where we walked through. I don't think he's around anymore. You're a little better now that we're out to this clearing here. Parking lot's just right down there. You see these 
Truck's going by. Tell you what, I'm hearing every little bird chirp. Yeah. Any little insect sound. This reminds me of we saw that grizzly going into Glacier the first time. Yeah. In the parking lot. And then we went on our hike. Oh boy, I was alert those first 15, 20 minutes of that hike. <laughs> oh, asphalt's never felt so good, Samantha. All right, so we're back in the truck. We are leaving. Uh, I did not feel like a hike all of a sudden today. How about you, Samantha? Do you feel like a hike? No. We don't feel like a hike today. So there's uh, another parking lot I can activate from, from, I think it's called Park Point Lookout. Assuming the weather holds together, now that's the next issue. Is these storms are starting to build up again. Uh, that might be a legit soda, even from the parking lot. You can walk up uh, a trail. It's about a quarter mile. Not very far. It only climbs 30-some feet. So it's within the 25-meter uh, limit that you're supposed to be within for soda. 25 vertical meters of the peak. So I think that's a legit place to activate the summit. I know it's a legit place to activate the park. So maybe we'll go check out that spot and uh, activate from there, at least get the park. I'm not that worried about the summit. I really wanted to climb a summit with our packs. That's kind of what I wanted to do. And that 500 foot ridge seems like just the right size to start out. So anthropology has never been an interesting subject to me. I've always preferred the natural history or the geological history of national parks. But Mesa Verde is a really cool spot to learn some human history uh, and human cultural history. So what this park is all about is it follows the development of ancient Puebloans that moved into the area about 800 AD and remained in the area until about 1300 AD. Now at first they lived up on the Mesa and were primarily farmers up there. They were a uh, nomadic culture but then uh, discovered that they could farm in this area and they settled down to farm the area. And for most of the time that they lived in this area, they lived up on top of the mesa in, in mud pits. So they would dig down into the earth some to create some of the volume of their living space and then build a structure, over, a roof structure over top of that to make their homes and places to store food and things like that. It wasn't until about 1200 AD that they decided to move down into these fantastic cliff dwellings that are by far the most popular part of Mesa Verde National Park. And they would find these alcoves, and the alcoves were awesome because they not only created a space for them to build their homes, but the reason the alcove was there was because that was a point that water seeped out from between the rock geological layers, between the sandstone and the shale. The water would flow through the sandstone underground, but then hit a layer of shale and it wouldn't penetrate. It would seep out from between those two layers. And it would create these alcoves, and then the ancient Puebloans would use those locations to build their their cliff dwellings because it provided them shelter as well as water. And then about 1300 AD, they left the area, and there's not a whole lot of explanation as to why. Uh, there were a lot of artifacts that were left behind. It seemed like they they left everything that they used there and just moved on. We drove around and saw a lot of the cliff dwellings from the provided overlooks 
in the park. We did uh, pay to take two of the ranger-led tours down into cliff dwellings. Uh, one was Balcony House, and that was a fantastic one because there's really no good way to see Balcony House other than taking the tour. Uh, and it was kind of an adventuresome tour, too, where you had to climb up a tall ladder to get up to the structure. And then you had to climb out through a narrow tunnel to leave uh, the area uh, and then walk up another couple ladders to, to find your way out. Then there was also Cliff Palace, which was just a fantastic large collection of structures and is probably the most photogenic cliff dwelling in the park. Though on this tour, we didn't get to see much of the Cliff Palace. Uh, we were led in a group, and we kind of stopped in one spot and listened to some information about Cliff Palace. We walked to another place around Akiva and listened to a little bit more about Cliff Palace. And we didn't really get to walk around in the entire, uh, in the entire dwelling. Uh, they're still protecting quite a bit of it. So, uh, our, our access, even on the paid tour, uh, was very limited in that regard. But a very cool place to visit. Uh, like I said, even if you're like me and you're not all that interested in anthropology, uh, there's a lot of really cool stuff here. It's, uh, it's a little bit of our, of our ancient history that's, uh, very, uh, entertaining to learn. All right, folks, this is take two of our activation at Mesa Verde. National Park. I am up on the uh, Park Point Overlook, which I'll have to look and see. I'm going to operate from the parking lot here. I think that still counts as a summit on the air. I'll research and verify that. It's a poda one way or the other, but I'm easily within 75 feet or uh, 25 meters of the summit and it should be within a closed contour as well. So it should count as a soda, but I'll research that. It's at least Poda Kilo 0051. Not really feeling like hiking down a trail uh, after the whole rattlesnake incident on the last go. So we're just gonna work here from the parking lot, get a quick uh, Morse code activation and get on the way. Uh, we're leaving the area tomorrow and I really need to get, get things ready to go to travel. I need to get some work in. Uh, it's been a rough start to the week. So uh, just need something fast. I'm going to go for 12 or so contacts, uh, get the park activated, and move on. That's the plan for today. we got some great views out here. Of course, we're in uh, southwestern Colorado, but it is the Four Corners area. So if you can just see some land features out there on the horizon, that's going to be the Monument Valley area in Utah. Okay, and if we pan here across uh, beautiful Mesa Verde to the south here off in the distance there you can just see Shiprock in New Mexico he's coming up about right there in your view right there in the middle of the screen that's Shiprock New Mexico and so if we look off to the southwest there we get uh, Caddy cornered across four corners and we can see Arizona cool area Big views. Ah, and Mesa Verde is just super cool. All right, here's the setup. We're pulled over in the kind of the back half of the parallel parking section of uh, Park Point. And I got a vertical whip mag mounted to the roof of the truck. It's the Chameleon 17 footer. I've got three and three quarter sections retracted to tune it properly for 15 meters. And, uh, all that weather is to my north, so hopefully that's uh, it should all be going east and staying out of my way. I'm going to get this done quick. I don't want to take any chances and not get this done. It's time to go. We got uh, the coax coming off that FMJ mag mount running right to the FT891. We got the BioNO 4.5 amp hour battery there charged up and ready to go. We'll be running on the uh, US Morse key there. Logging by hand. Uh, I got all the hand logging here instead of the computer because I'm still running out of the pack that I thought I was going to be using yesterday. And here we go.
And away we go. Didn't see anyone else spotted on 15. We'll see how this goes. Massachusetts. Nerves still kick in and on CW. I'm not getting enough practice. on 15 I got squat get to 15 minutes with nothing going to 20 it's possible I'm still skipping over most of the country that's possible Cold breeze, feel like some cold outflow from a storm. Got me checking my six. I guess I can do that in the camera. Sky's not too bad.
It's building up behind me. We have to go voice. It's a little slow starting, but once I got going, I got going. I spent uh, 15 minutes on 15 meters and got one response. Uh, then it looks like I spent, oh, 23 minutes. Is that right? Yeah, 23 minutes on 20 meters. 
and got my other 14 contacts. So, uh, yeah, that's why we uh, spend so much time on 20 and 40. <laughs> it's just a matter of, of return. Got to get it done quick and get out of here. But, uh, wow, my sending was really, really bad. I need, uh, I need more practice. I've uh, spent most of my time this year gearing up for my, uh, my big finale adventure uh, that's coming up in early October. And CW has suffered because of that. So uh, once we get past that point, <coughs> I think we're going to have to rededicate to Morse code, practice more CW, and get better at both receiving and sending, because uh, I think that's the worst I've ever done. I felt really sloppy the whole way through. And this breeze that's blowing gave me just enough chill to make my hands a little jumpy, and I don't know if the ergonomics on this tailgate is too great, but uh, a lot of dits turning into daws and and vice versa. So I'm not real proud of that, but we'll work on it. But finally got Mesa Verde done, Kilo 0051. That's been taking a little while. I've had a lot of things lately, and this last month or so tripped me up on activations between weather and rattlesnakes and flat tires and all kinds of stuff. <laughs> but uh, that's the way it goes. It's not always smooth sailing. That's what makes it an adventure. But uh, we're all wrapped up here at Mesa Verde National Park. This is KE0VIM Traveling Ham. We're clear. 7-3. Hey folks, we are rapidly approaching the climax of Adventure 2023 for our family, and you are not going to want to miss some of the adventures that I've got planned here for Parks on the Air over the next few weeks. Like, subscribe, and share. You're not going to want to miss this. If things go as planned, there's going to be some really cool stuff happening on this channel over the next month or so. Don't go anywhere. 7-3.